Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for March, where we'll be looking at some big and small releases from Firebase for the past month or so. We have six topics today, so let's dig in right away. A few months ago, I showed you the new structure of the Firebase homepage, which focuses more on the development phases of your project. Well, we just also updated our documentation to follow the exact same structure. So if you now go to firebase.google.com slash docs, you see the new build, release and monitor, and engage sections, as well as a section on Firebase fundamentals. Each of the links takes you to a different section of the documentation, where the left navigation only shows the products that are relevant to that development phase. The top navigation still contains the complete list of links, so you can get everywhere quickly. I've been using this new structure for a bit, and I love how much more focused the left navigation is, so I hope it's the same for you. Firebase Remote Config helps you manage and monitor your app configurations from within the Firebase console. This means that you can make changes to your app without having to build and release a new version every time. We have just improved the Remote Config parameter list so that parameter rows can be expanded for a detailed view or collapsed for a summary view. We also added what we call logic lines to indicate the relationship between a condition and its values. And A-B testing experiments and their variant level details are now displayed directly in the table giving you a much more complete and comprehensive view of your remote config template. And finally, we made search faster, we improved accessibility, and we improved the experience on mobile. All of this provides you with a much better view of your app configurations. Got any feedback? Leave it in the comments below. In BOM version 26.6 of the Firebase SDKs for Android, we added custom hosted model download and on-device management capabilities to Firebase machine learning. You can now also get the model download ID which allows you to track the progress when downloading models. In addition, we added support for Gradle configuration cache for Crashlytics and Perfmon for both the regular and the NDK builds. This should significantly improve the performance of repeated builds if you use those products and of course, if you have the caching enabled. The SDK also contains many other bug fixes, so be sure to upgrade with the links that I provided below. I hope you all caught the Flutter Engage event a few weeks ago where Flutter 2 was released. But even if not, if you're using Flutter, you're probably aware of the migration to null safety that was introduced as part of this event. Flutterfire is a set of high quality plugins designed to help developers integrate Firebase services into their Flutter apps. Now, many of the Flutterfire plugins have already been upgraded to be soundly null safe, and work on others is on the way. If you want to get started with Firebase in your Flutter app, check out firebase.flutter.dev or the documentation that I linked below. In Firebase, you can use custom dimensions and metrics to collect and analyze data that analytics doesn't track automatically. This means that you can provide values for custom dimensions and for metrics in parameters when you log events and when you set user properties in your code. There is now one unified management table for these dimensions and metrics, and you can find it from the Google Analytics left navigation by going to Configure and then Custom Definitions. To register a custom dimension, click the Create Custom Dimension button, follow the prompts, and click Save. All custom dimensions are now also available for use throughout the Analytics console in Reporting, the Audience and Segment Builder, and in Analysis. See the link in the description for full details. Last month, I told you about the many features in the latest release of Firebase Performance Monitoring. Now, in all the excitement about its faster reporting and the ability to run without Google Play services, I completely forgot to mention that the Performance Monitoring SDK for iOS and Android are now also open sourced. Like for all our open source SDKs, we love community contributions, such as bug reports, feature requests, and even more so, pull requests. The links to the GitHub repos are in the description below, so I look forward to seeing you there. That's all we have for today. My name is Frank Ruppuff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes. <laughs>